Well, today's project is my 2003 F350 service truck with a V10, and I think it's just uh, Thanksgiving thoughts. I think it's just about to roll over 400,000 miles. Let's see, 396.6. But I've had an issue with this service truck for several years now, and I told myself I was going to fix it once it got bad enough. I get into my truck the other day, start the engine. Turn the AC on, and I hear this pop. I can smell Freon coming out of the vents, which, through my excellent skills of deductive reasoning and uh, diagnostic mastery, I've determined that the evaporator is leaking. Now, it's not 100% leak, because if it was leaked out 100%, the AC wouldn't work, but the AC still cycles on, and it blows cool, but it doesn't blow cold. Um, years ago, I had a problem with the air conditioning. When I first got this truck, air conditioning worked just absolutely fine. But then it started blowing cold, had to put an AC compressor in it. I put a new condenser, new dryer, new orifice tube, and started it up. And the AC worked, but it just never worked well. Um, just get going down the road down the highway and you're fine but as soon as you go to a stop and you stop like stoplight or something it starts blowing kind of tepid tepid air not tepid i don't know where i got that word from start blowing tepid air which means like a kind of not hot but not cool it would cool you off enough not to sweat but it was uncomfortable um generally fords from my experience have excellent air conditioners it'll freeze you out of the damn cab even at an idle um, the V10 idles around 800 RPM or something, so it's not a low idle issue. It should work just fine. But today's project, I'm going to pull that evaporator out, pull the uh, accumulator out, the desk and dryer deal, and go ahead and swap out the condenser. Now, the reason I'm swapping out the condenser is just because when I first did that job, I put the compressor in it, I put a new condenser in it, I did not swap out the evaporator, I put an accumulator in it, I flushed everything, and it worked fine for a little while and then it stopped blowing cold so i think what happened there was still some trash in the system somewhere and it plugged up that orifice tube so the way it works is your compressor compresses the freon sends it to your condenser which uh, exchanges some heat cools it off a little bit then it goes from there straight over to your orifice tube which is inside here the orifice tube is just a little restriction the way i explain how it works is if um if you ever have a air compressor and you have a nozzle on the end and you uh, have a lot of compressed air, you know, 100 PSI or something, and you uh, pull that nozzle, you know how it gets cold. Same thing when you do it with your mouth. <sighs> when you blow on something, you can feel it cold. That orifice is just a very small hole that the Freon um, basically runs into and it causes a pressure differential and it comes out on the other side. Um, goes from a liquid to a gas. And anytime you go from liquid to a gas, you get a cooling effect. That cooling goes through your evaporator, which absorbs heat from your cab. And then once it absorbs all that heat, it comes out through this low pressure line through your desiccant dryer, which is just like, um, it's like silica. It just absorbs moisture from the system and goes from there right back down to your compressor. I'm probably leaving something out or got my, you know, my chain of uh, flow wrong, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Very first thing is we have to evacuate the system. I'm a huge proponent in EPA mandates and standards and everything. You're not supposed to vent Freon to the atmosphere because it apparently kills turtles or something. So uh, use a approved HVAC recycling system that costs several thousand dollars. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera real quick because I just don't want to show off my big fancy machine. And then uh, we'll start work. So first thing first, you want to make sure that you lean on your coolant reservoir and break it. So you have to replace it and it was kind of looking dirty anyway place it you need to take that purge valve off there's three 10 millimeter nuts on it now we're going to need to take um this bracket off there's an eight millimeter there's two eight millimeters on there take that bracket off um we're gonna take our accumulator out of the way which uses a spring clip here um take that connection loose take the accumulator off by taking that bolt that bolt that bolt and there's I think only three on there gotta get the accumulator out and then we can take our eight millimeter case bolts off and there's like 16 million of them so we'll get those off all right so that orifice tube just gets stuck all the way down in there pull it out 
and there's all kinds of trash on it. So I got the accumulator out, the orifice tube out, I got the lines disconnected. Now I gotta do is finish taking all the bolts off this top cover and then the top cover will pop off. All right, the cover's off. This is how it goes in. You've got a bolt hole there, 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 there. Now right there where that little mark's on, I'll talk about it in a minute. There's a bolt there, one there, there, and there. And then that dude comes off. Now you have this tiny little metal clip right here. And it just clips on like that and just kind of sandwiches in there. All you have to do <clears throat> is get you a small pick like that. Get into the side like that pry it down and then pull that up a little bit and you won't break it. I still remember the first time I ever did this setup, it was in a Chevrolet and I got all the bolts out and it wouldn't come out, wouldn't come out, wouldn't come out. And I fought that stupid freaking clip for probably an hour and a half and then broke the clip and then realized there was a clip on it. Now, the evaporator should come out. And another reason I needed to do this is uh, Ford back then didn't use cabin air filters. So, this actually isn't all that bad. Well, that's what the evaporator looks like. You can tell, probably not on camera real well, but there's some green dye right in there. That's where it leaked out. Now this rubber piece on the outside, you need to make sure you try to save that, wrap it around the new one because the new one doesn't come with one. So I'll set this over here in my trash pile, get the new one out and you can tell you know, that's all a dog hair from my, probably my dog, Ringo. Um, really doesn't look all that bad and it's not plugged up completely, but every little bit helps and, you know, it leaking over here somewhere is the main problem. So I'll go ahead and unbox a new one, get that um, foam piece wrapped around it. And for those of you, that's what the hole looks like. Not a whole lot to see there, but you know, I'm always curious. So I'll go ahead and get the uh, new evaporator stuck in there. So that's the part number we're using. Like I said, it doesn't come with any of the rubber seal or anything. It does come with a new orifice tube and some O-rings. Another bag of O-rings. And I actually did my own research, try to verify something. So Ford doesn't actually make their own evaporators. You can buy a Ford Motorcraft evaporator for 100 to 200 more dollars, depending on your dealer where you get it from. And if you get a brand, you'll see those numbers on there. So what a lot of manufacturers do, not just for Dodge does it, Chevy, everybody does it. Nobody makes their own stuff, but they private label stuff. So they contact the manufacturer, the, uh, the company who actually makes the evaporators. I don't know if it's Four Seasons or not, because Four Seasons probably does the same thing. But they say, hey, we need this evaporator for this truck. We want to put our label on it. So they put the Ford sticker on it, and then you're buying a regular four season. I don't know that 100% because I don't have a uh, brand new Ford one, but I am gonna take the cover off this and then we're gonna see if you see those same numbers. All right, there's our two evaporators and the new one, 54184. Ford. If you look at the old one, 54184. I'm not the original owner to this truck, so I don't know if it's ever had an evaporator replaced. It may or may not have. It does have 400,000 miles on it and I bought it with about 210,000 miles on it. From the research I found online, that's what all the Ford forums say, is that you buy a brand new Ford part, it's got the same exact number stamped in the same exact spot with the same exact font, and I doubt manufacturers are coordinating their efforts to put numbers on there, but I'll go ahead and get that piece of rubber on there, and then we need to tape the sides, this side and that side. You can see the old tape right there. Uh, again, I don't think Ford uses, that's a uh, Gorilla Tape. They probably don't use Gorilla Tape very much and they definitely don't use it like that. So this is probably an aftermarket Four Seasons to be replaced in an aftermarket Four Seasons. All right, new evaporator's in, the cover's back on. I haven't put the uh, accumulator in because that's the last step, but our orifice tube, um, we're gonna put it in. And just remember that the big screen goes towards pressure. And if you follow your line down, it goes towards your condenser up there. So we stick this guy in like that, but you wanna make sure you lube those O-rings and pretty much every time I do an AC job, I use brand new oil. So put a little bit of oil on that and you shove it in there and you can see 
those detents right there are actually what stop the uh, orifice tube from going too far. So you need to shove it all the way in until it hits right about there and you can just barely see that top. All right, so I got some new O-rings on here. I've already got the accumulator. Now, don't open the accumulator, accumulator or your receiver dryer. That's the last thing you want to do in the entire thing. As soon as you open this up, it's going to start absorbing moisture out of the atmosphere. Um, the wives tell is that once it's open about 20, 30 minutes to atmospheric air, the desiccant inside is just completely saturated and it's not good anymore. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, but... Um, it doesn't hurt anything just to leave it so it's actually loose i can't go ahead and tie it down because i need it loose to line this fitting up with that fitting but now i need to take out the condenser condenser is pretty easy on those trucks you just take off this top panel you take this bracket off this bracket off take that line off and that line down there both of those once those are out then the entire condenser will pop up you do have to remove that at millimeter, that at millimeter, and get your hood prop out of the way, and then you're good to go. And I actually need a new hood prop because this one's a little bit, but it still works. So, eight millimeter, five sixteenths, five sixteenths, um, thirteen millimeter, thirteen millimeter. Go ahead and pull the lines loose first, and then while I have the lines loose, I'm going to go ahead and take this line, which is going to be the one on the bottom. It's going up to that guy, and flush it out. <clears throat> the reason I'm flushing it out because there was still some metal in there and that's really the whole reason I'm replacing this condenser even though it's I replaced it about a hundred thousand miles ago when I did the compressor I still got metal into the orifice tube and metal in the orifice tube is a bad deal so I'll go ahead and pop all that stuff loose so I got the old condenser out you can tell somebody uh backed into my truck and damaged it but oddly enough it didn't actually leak so the new condenser that I got is a UAC Universal Air Conditioning Condenser. That's the part number. There's a couple of different styles of condensers out there. There's a cross flow, means that what'll happen is you see where that little divider is right there. All of these will go, a cross flow will have like a tube. All this will be pressurized and all of it goes all the way through to the other side and then that side will have a little tube that comes over here and feeds this so all your uh, freon is just going straight through now the problem with that is if you put a bunch of pressure in this tube mainly all your oil and everything is going to sit in the bottom and it's going to separate and then you're only getting freon on the top and the system doesn't get oiled um, it's not that big of a deal but if you get what's called a parallel flow, which means it's going to go, that's the reason there's that little stop there. It's going to flow all the way through there, go down, flow all the way back, and there will be little channels. There's one there, there's one there. And so it has to do this, you know, uh, kind of snake through it. A serpentine flow um, isn't used on a lot of vehicles. But it'll start here and it'll go through each an individual one. And you'll know a serpentine flow because the end coils over and looks like they took one big long coil and then folded it all up now that would get you better heat transfer but the problem with that is a serpentine flow has little bitty passages in here and if those passages plug uh, plug up then it just gets excessive head pressure my favorite style is a parallel flow so if you guys put one in your truck get a parallel flow um, i've had pretty good luck with uac this old one's actually a uac and again, the only reason I'm changing it out is because one, I had damage, and two, I had metal in the system, which means um, probably I didn't flush it good enough when I put the compressor on it, um, but I could have had uh, metal, little pieces of metal go all the way through uh, the condenser and come out the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and set this in. And all it does, you see that rubber down there, the little rubber block, and there's a rubber block down there. You need to make sure you keep those rubber blocks and then same thing on top of those little bars. Also, sometimes condensers, try not to bend up the fins. Sometimes the new condensers don't come with new studs and they don't have the right nut, so you need to save all that stuff. And I know it seems kind of common sense, but I've done jobs before, especially in a shop where I pull it all apart and I throw the trash, you know, throw the parts in a dumpster, wait for the new parts, new parts come in, then I'm digging through the dumpster if it's still available. And sometimes, They've actually come and emptied the dumpster and then you're screwed. So we'll go ahead and get that set in. Um, I still need to flush that one line out and then we'll get everything hooked up. All right, everything's installed. Now we don't have to worry about this Schrader valve because it's brand new. It came with the accumulator, but the high side Schrader valve is old. 
So make sure you swap that guy out. I've uh, fixed a whole bunch of me mechanic work from doing AC work when they just used the old Schrader valves and had a leak and that's all it was was a Schrader valve. So luckily we got some brand new valves. Just match it up, throw it in there, make sure you uh, put some oil on it and then we'll pull a vacuum. All right, so now we pull a vacuum. And if you get to 20, you're doing pretty good. If it stays at 10, you got a leak. It's really loud because I'm using my compressor. Because I use this little air operated pump. So I have a, a 12 volt or 120 volt, like a commercial AC pump, but I've had it for years. It needs to be rebuilt. And I was on location one day and I just tried one of those, and that seems to work pretty good. And I've always got my service truck. So we'll pull a vacuum, I'll get the uh, compressor shut down so you guys can actually hear me, and then um, uh, I'll show you how to charge it with the correct amount of Freon. It means it's an A and B conversation, so see, see your way. way out. Which he still hasn't learned in like <laughs> 13 years. I was right here standing. Anyway, so my gauges are a little off. That's pretty close to 28. You know, it should be a little closer to 30, but I didn't zero the gauge out and to zero the gauge out you take that little plug off you stick a screwdriver in that little flat blade piece of brass right there and adjust that to zero but it is holding a vacuum so what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to our tank then we're going to put our tank on our scale then zero out our scale now specs on this is 42 to 45 ounces of refrigerant which is about two and a half pounds so i'll get it about two pounds and then i will um, stop and wait and i'll let it settle and i'll watch my pressures and vent temps and go from there you want to make sure both all your valves are closed we're gonna open this guy you don't have to open it all the way we're gonna charge liquids we're gonna set it upside down turn the power on then you zero it <clears throat> so now when we start charging it'll show the pressure but when you're charging this way with manual gauges, you're going to have a little air in this line. So when after you open that can, open that until you see that come out. That means you have actually a Freon coming out. I'll zero my scale because we went off about an ounce. And now we'll open this valve right here and we'll watch our scale. Watch the scale. And we can probably get quite a bit in the system, um, but we're gonna have to start it and let the AC compressor cycle, but it won't start unless it has enough pressure in the system. So we'll see how much we can get. If we can get two pounds, then we'll shut it off. If you have a good refrigerant machine, it'll actually force that much uh, Freon into the system and then you don't have to worry about it. Don't hit the tank. You don't hit the tank. But it looks like we're gonna be able to uh, get the whole two pound, two and a half pounds in it is a pretty warm day, and like the warmer you have your Freon tank of Freon, the more pressure builds up in it. All right, we're gonna stop it there. Go ahead and start the truck. We're gonna watch our pressures. So there is a temperature scale that you should be using for R134. Right now it's about 90 degrees. If you look at your temperature scale, we should be between about 225, 250, and 45 on the low side. Now that's from memory. I didn't actually look it up, but so far the pressures look great. We'll let that run for a little bit. We'll see our pressures fall down to. Um, I'll get online real quick and I'll look up exactly what the scales supposed to, uh, what the pressures are supposed to be, and get right back. So we should be around 50 on the low and 250 on the high. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little more Freon and see if we can get our pressures up. Right now we're 2.6 pounds. So I'm gonna add some more off, the, off video and see if we can get that pressure up. Ah, oh, shit, I wasn't even recording. Well, okay, so our gauges look pretty good. Uh, 45 to 200. Technically, it should be a little higher than that, um, but I've already put about uh, three and a half pounds scale. 
Now your lines and your gauges will take up about a half pound, so that's right on. Um, from the specs I could find online, it's 42 to 45 ounces, which is about two and a half, little 2.8 pounds. Um, but I am out of Freon. I have to get me another can of Freon. I'll probably add a little bit to it. Uh, went inside the cab, the cab's blowing nice and cold. So we got a new evaporator, new condenser, new accumulator, new Schrader valves, new orifice tube, vacuum, Freon, everything works pretty good. Now, I, I ran without a scale for a long time and I just went off pressures, which is okay to do in cars. It's not that big of a deal, but you really want to have a scale. Um, if you want to buy the scale, I bought it off Amazon. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like 40, 50 bucks or something, maybe a little more expensive. But it's worked great. Um, the manifold gauges, I actually like Master Cooler Alvin Air gauges much better than this Napa brand. This Napa is like an off brand and this is like my third set and I constantly have problems with them, but I needed one on location one day because I forgot my old gauges at the house. So I bought some. But there's gonna be links for everything in the description. If you want that evaporator, you want the condenser, you want the accumulator, there'll be links down in the description. They're all Amazon links. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out and fix it. <laughs>